Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 14th and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see this area of clouds moving towards Pacific Northwest. This slug of moisture back here north of the Hawaiian Islands, south of Alaska, coming across the Gulf of Alaska. This is what's going to bring our frontal system as we go on in through tonight and on into the day on Friday. We're going to take a detailed look at that and what is to come and we'll look at the extended forecast as always as well. So here we go this morning. This is the visible satellite imagery. I'm going to stop this right at the end of the run. You can see the clouds, how they run towards the Cascade Crest, and then they kind of stop, socked in on western Oregon, Washington for many areas, southwest BC, and back here, you see the clouds start to increase. That's what's going to bring our precipitation as we go through tonight for some areas. So taking a look at the comparison slider, look at December 31st. We've gone back in time a bit, and I'm scrolling back and forth, and you can see how drought has overtaken much of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. Over the last two weeks, we did get some uh, rid of some of the exceptional drought across the Idaho Panhandle, but not much change otherwise. But yeah, we are very dry across the region. This is since mid-May. And again, the percent of average precipitation, very low across much of the area. Also, got two big fires, the Mount Underwood fire, the Bear Gulch fire there across the Olympic Mountains. And as we scroll through the next couple of days, you can see it produces smoke on both fires again this afternoon. But as we go through the overnight hours into Friday, we're getting some rain across these areas and that potentially could be suppressing some of the smoke from these fires. Cross your fingers, but it looks like a good dousing of precipitation here for Vancouver Island and the Olympic Mountains. And that's a good thing because these are big fires relative to these locations. I mean, some of the the rest of the state can get some pretty big fires, but these have got to be in the top 1% of fires there for Vancouver Island and the Olympic Mountains. Now, just a reminder here, my channel was reset by YouTube for whatever reason. I got hacked, but they reset like the name of the channel to my channel. This is the original channel. Please don't unsubscribe just yet. I should be gaining access either today or tomorrow. I'll be trying that as soon as I end this video here. But yeah, don't unsubscribe there. We will go back to this channel if I get it back up and running. If not, the channel I'm dealing with right now will be the one going forward and we'll just build it back up again from scratch. So beneficial rain Friday through Saturday. You can see it's not a lot for places like Wenatchee, Moses Lake, Ritzville, Spokane, a little bit more, Northeast Washington, Bonners Ferry, maybe up towards an inch, but you see the bigger amounts across some of the Cascades. More on that here in a moment as well. But yeah, you got to take what you can get at this time of year when Mother Nature wants to share it. Thunderstorms this weekend, that trough's going to be digging off our coastline here and sending some of these rounds of uh, thunderstorms here as we go on in through this weekend. And again, for Idaho, Montana, some of the Rocky Mountains, watch out for that dangerous lightning. Now, this is the excessive rainfall outlook. And I scrolled down here because they do talk about the Pacific Northwest, but they didn't issue anything for it. I was kind of wondering about this, but they do explain their reasoning behind that thought process. And they think that there is a chance for some flash floods across some of the burn scar areas because there will be this heavy rainfall. You can see they're talking about the core of this rare August atmospheric river will move onshore Washington state on Friday, prolonged heavy rainfall, but they didn't think it was enough to, you know, put out the excessive rainfall outlook. They probably could have, and I don't think anybody would have batted an eye, but you see, they talk about the potential for two to four and even higher precipitation amounts across the Olympics and Northern Cascades. So yeah, there is the chance for that. And they, they talked about even their coordination with Seattle and Spokane office out there. But yeah, I think they could have, but we'll see. They still have time to update that. Now, taking a look at what is going on here at 500 millibars. So put this into motion and here comes that slug of moisture there. There's our trough. There's our frontal system really getting ramped up here as we go through the day on Friday. You can see it right over Haida Gwaii there, pumping this atmospheric river into Washington state. A lot of rainfall for some areas, but as always, there's going to be some people who get rain shadowed and they're going to be disappointed with your precipitation amounts. That's always the case no matter the time of year then the trough hangs out and it's going to be with us as we go through this weekend on into early next week probably spreading thunderstorms especially east of the cascades back up with this system as well this is monday afternoon and then we go on in towards next week you see the ridge starting to build a little bit here across the southwest usa and might try to push a ridge axis a little bit closer to the pacific northwest we'll be watching that over the next few days now Precipitable water, there's that slug of moisture that we talked about on the infrared satellite imagery. And you can see that fly across the Gulf of Alaska, get organized into the frontal system and just absolutely plow into the Pacific Northwest as we go through the day on Friday. That's bringing our precipitation right there. But yeah, look at that rich, deep, 
precipitable water just rolling right towards Pacific Northwest. First atmospheric river of the season. And here's a, uh, here's a look at the actual percent of normal. So you can see some of these values are up over 200% normal for this time of year. And again, you see that frontal system just organize and plow itself into the state of Washington, Oregon, British Columbia. And look at that 240% of normal, some areas along the Washington, Oregon coast. Now looking at the integrated vapor transport, same thing here. And this is how we measure uh, atmospheric rivers. And it does qualify as an atmospheric river. Category three most likely is probably uh, uh, kind of the consensus on what this is end up going to end up being. So not too bad. This time of year, largely beneficial. And again, taking a look at the satellite imagery, there it is right there. That's that slug of moisture that I just showed you on the precipitable water maps and the integrated vapor transport map. So there is our frontal system right now. And I've been showing this atmospheric river rating system chart, but I've made an update to this. This is going to be largely beneficial here across the region, except in those very isolated areas where the rain falls a little bit too fast and furious over some of the burn scar regions but places like the you, you just have to put out this fire i mean so you, you, beggars can't be choosers right now this is a good thing that this frontal system is rolling in now also there's going to be some winds with this system as well but it's just a typical uh, kind of a typical fall bluster here you can see some of these winds approaching 40 miles per hour for the coast and maybe for the interior here maybe up over 40 miles per hour for some isolated locations looks like it has seattle topping off at about 32 miles per hour so just kind of a blustery system uh, across the higher terrain in some of the coastal areas as you can see straight at georgia up there it looks like you know gusting into the mid 40s so it'll be a little bit blustery here with this frontal passage as we go through the day on friday and the north american uh, the european and north american model are pretty similar you see the european gust in seattle at all 31 miles per hour so just up uh, just a bluster nothing too crazy the problem is here that even with the north wind we had a few days ago across one of the local parks there in normandy park i saw some dead snags that had gotten blown down one of them was pretty big and it landed right across the trail where i always walk so I wouldn't have wanted to, wouldn't wanted to be hit with that. And that's something that happens during the summertime. A lot of trees, sometimes they die and these branches die off. And so when you get this, even these blustery winds toward 30 miles per hour, you can bring down some of those branches. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind if you're going to be out and about on the day on Friday. Now, looking at the European ensemble here on the so for the pacific northwest basically but this is the most recent here on the left you can see it backed off in some of the precipitation a little bit here but again a pretty good dose of precipitation especially across vancouver island southwest bc north cascades central cascades and the olympic mountains but it does bring some decent amounts down into oregon here as well and the willamette valley it is bringing some it did back off on some of the totals here but again we just got to take whatever whatever mother nature can throw our way now total precipitation in inches on the high resolution Rapid refresh starting to come into range. This is as we go through tonight. You can see the precipitation starting somewhere after midnight <clears throat> for Seattle. It starts earlier there for Vancouver Island and the Olympic Peninsula. So as we go through Friday morning, you can see Seattle, two-tenths of an inch of rain, not bad. Bellingham, three-tenths of an inch. Bigger amounts across the Washington coast and up towards Vancouver Island. Some of the Cascades as well, getting some better amounts. But as we go through the day Friday, see those totals starting to pile up there for Seattle. Notice the rain shadow going on there. You know, you're looking at Port Angeles, Squim out there. That's why they call it the Banana Belt. Not much rain compared to what Seattle and Olympia are getting. A lot of the Olympic mountains, big time rainfall coming in here. And then we go through Saturday morning. That's as far as the model run goes. But it does show some decent amounts for Portland down through the Willamette Valley, the Oregon coast as well. And then there will be some additional rounds here as we go through the weekend with that trough off our coastline, but it more hit and miss thunderstorm activity east of the mountains. So if we look at the same thing for the North American model, it actually shows that rain shadow here as we go through the day Friday, but then it shows an interesting convergence on feature that kind of goes towards the peninsula there out across Whidbey Island and up in towards, you know, Marysville area right there. So it does show some decent amounts right there. Shows Seattle at seven tenths of an inch of rain. And of course, lesser amounts across Oregon. And again, the big amounts across some of Washington and British Columbia. Now, taking a look at daily two meter max temperature, this is Thursday, August 14th. You see Seattle topping off somewhere in the mid 70s. We'll see if we actually get there. Low 80s for the Willamette Valley, but you can see temperatures definitely down where we were a couple days ago. We go through Friday, a pretty rainy day. I think Seattle might be lucky if they get to 70 degrees there. We go to Saturday. 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then you see a little bit of a gradual warm up as we go towards the end of the week. You see Seattle bumping back up into the lower 80s, Southwest BC, Willamette Valley, maybe back up towards 90 degrees as well by the time we go towards next week. And no promises on that. We'll be breaking that down day by day. Now, <clears throat> a little bit of a look at the extended forecast here. I'm going to scroll through the uh, frontal system coming on, and then we go on into the extended forecast. What we're looking at here is the European artificial intelligence yesterday afternoons and last night. So we're just kind of comparing model runs here. And as we go off into the extended, you can kind of see that ridge starting to build in as we go through the end of next week. But again, this trough is pretty close. So again, kind of a cat and mouse game between this ridge and the trough. Uh, which one is going to win out? We'll be watching that over the next few days. And then if we scroll through the extended forecast, you can see the trough would be cooling us down. And and then some more troughing, some lowered heights across Western Canada would definitely be keeping us cooler than normal there as we go through the end of the month of August. And this is the 15 day precipitation anomaly. Uh, this shouldn't be a surprise with everything we just looked at. And uh, just a reminder here, this one has been updated um, but let me see if we've got an update to that. I can't remember when this one runs, but just a kind of reminder that you can still get warm at this time of year. As we go on into September, you see Portland, maybe a couple more 90 degree days. And this is not really a forecast of what's likely to happen, but just a reminder that even as we go through September, it can get quite warm here. And this is really when the offshore winds start to peak for our region. We get the late August and on in through September, we start to get these offshore winds and we can still have fire danger in some warm temperatures, but you can see the gradual decrease decline in these temperatures as we go through the end of September. Same thing for Seattle. I mean, if you look off there, what, September 8th or 9th, whatever that is, it shows a 90 degree day. So the fairly hot for Seattle. So just a reminder, we can stay hot, but the gradual decline is upon us here. And as we go through the month of September, it becomes more apparent. 8 to 14 day above normal across much of the West Coast as we go through the end of the month. We'll see how that turns out. And they still have this below normal signal. This was issued yesterday though. And uh, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, you can see me working on my stuff here. Early season atmospheric river, again, should be largely beneficial at this time of year. But anyway, hope you guys are, you know, I hope everybody has found this new channel. Looks like the views are doing pretty good. So I think most people have found it. The YouTube algorithm has latched onto this channel and it is showing um, the channel, I think, to most of my viewers here. But again, don't unsubscribe from the other channel because that one will become the main channel again. And I should be getting the California Weather Watch channel up as run up and running here again, hopefully today. I am kind of nervous to try to sign in here because it should be available now. And if it doesn't let me now, then I, I don't know what to do. I'll I guess I'll just have to keep waiting and trying to sign in. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, what else? Click like and subscribe. Hope you guys have found this channel and I will talk to you guys again tomorrow.